So what learning analytics means to me is the use of data that you collect about the events that occur in a learning environment and how can you use that data to guide your design decisions such that the overall experience is improved. Learning environments can both be online or in class, face-to-face, -face, traditional uh, learning, yes. So the data that I am collecting is basically, or it could be summarized uh, as the interaction or all the interactions that occur in a learning environment. And by interaction, what I mean could be students with the students, if they answer each other's posts, for example, in a discussion forum. It could be students with the material, so you detect when a student is using certain resource, students and tutors, uh, it could be when uh, a tutor asks a question in a forum and the students answer that or the other way around. So any sort of interaction that occurs in that environment, if it is technology mediated, then you typically gain access to recordings of the events that occur. So from my point of view, the way I see it is the first step that a teacher should uh, consider for using learning analytics is actually thinking what kind of problem or aspect do you want to detect and act on your learning environment. You need to have some sort of objectives. So for example, suppose is I want to make sure that my students don't drop out of my course or I want to make sure that they uh, sustain the engagement all throughout the course or I want to make sure that they, I don't know, they participate actively in team activities. So when you tackle one specific aspect, then you start again working backwards and trying to deduce first what kind of actions would be helping me to achieve that and what kind of data will give me an insight if those actions are working or not. So then when you put everything together, if you have this scheme in place, you would have data that is being collected, you looking at the data and see how does that relate to your objective and then deciding what kind of actions or adjustments you need to deploy in the environment such that your objective or your outcome is achieved. So for example, sources of information that you can get directly from the students. You can ask them uh, about uh, the dedication they had with some activities. Was it too intense? Was it not? Um, what kind of activities did they end up uh, solving or not solving, participating or not? Uh, you can ask them also about uh, when do they get these activities done? How are they, how are they going about doing this? Um, suppose, for example, that you want to uh, foster teamwork. You can ask them and say, so did you do this alone? Did you do this with your team? Uh, you can even ask them directly, is your team working perfectly? Would you change something on your team? So that type of information already offers you uh, a view or an insight about what happens in terms of interactions and you can react on that. So the variety of data sources you can have is, is huge. Uh, so you shouldn't be um, obsessed with getting electronic data only from online platforms you again should be very creative and, and open-minded and say what I need is information, what I need is insight about what happens in the environment and any way I can see to get that information is correct. Once you get that information then the delicate part comes which is the analysis or the sense making. You have to make sense of that data you collected. So if you have the number of times that a student's logged into the platform plus the number of times they post in the forum, you have to make sense of that and you have to try to see if it gives you an insight on the level of engagement or not. And once you make sense out of that data, then you decide what kind of adjustments you would like to deploy on your, on your environment. So for example, suppose that you get the data that half of the students barely connect to the platform or barely participate in the forum. To give you a simple example, what kind of action would you decide? It could be something as simple as sending them an email and say, by the way, it's been two, three weeks in the course. I see that you haven't participated in the discussion forum. It is important for our course and therefore um, I would like you to participate or tell me what kind of issues or what kind of difficulties you're finding for participating and that type of action could produce an effect in which you see either the student that begins to participate or they come back to you with some reasons by which the forum is not actually working the way it should which points you to another aspect you suitable for improvement. So I think the crucial part is not so much capturing the data but it's more like sense making and deciding what kind of action would you deploy. So a concrete example that I'm using in terms of learning analytics is um, detecting. So in my course, the students are supposed to use certain amount of tools to perform certain tasks. Uh, fairly procedural, but uh, we give them those tools and some of the tools are optional. 
but we want them to get used to that type of environment. So one of the things that we are observing is the level of use of those tools. So how often do you come in contact with those tools? And what we have detected is a correlation between um, the set of tools that are used more often out of three or four and academic achievement. So we see that certain students that do not use a specific tool within the portfolio, uh, they correlate with low academic achievement. So the actions that we derive from there is try to lower the barrier for them to use that type of uh, resource, providing additional support, tutorials, hands-on type of guides, uh, kind of like scaffold a little bit more that type of uh, activity using those tools such that they get exposed to that uh, environment and hopefully they will translate into better academic achievement. Yeah, so another example is um, to provide a students with uh, brief questions about certain topics that you plan to cover in the class and you ask them to read before coming to class certain basic documentation. Um, what we did is we embedded the questions like next to the document. It's basically, you, you can take, make no difference between the document and the questions. And the questions are grouped by topics. And then what we know before going to class is what kind of questions were answered more often and which one of those were answered incorrectly more often. And that informs us on how to approach the lecture. We can go there and try to tackle certain issues that we have identified uh, previously that are difficult or there are or students are struggling with coming to terms with a type of procedure or concept or topic. And therefore we emphasize a little bit more on the lecture based on that. So my, my final comment about learning analytics says, is that um, it is a, a very promising area, but at the same time it comes with challenges. Uh, the promise is that by knowing exactly what it happens in detail in a learning environment, very likely will be in a much better position to improve it. But when you try to deploy it in reality, it requires a lot of multidisciplinary work. Um, a lot of people involved is not only something you can do on your own, only on your class. You will need support, technical support. You probably need some strategic view at the level of the institution. So it is a high potential, but also tricky implementation type of trade-off for learning analytics. That's the way I see it.